Hey there, Virgo. Uh, just making sure I'm actually recording, but uh, thank you for being here, Virgo. This is going to be part three of your 2023 reading. We're going to look at houses 9 through 12 in this reading. In the ninth house here, we're going to look at travel, wisdom, learning, things like that. You have this yin energy card, so uh, it might be a more withdrawn year for you, although uh, to be quite honest with you, I do not think that's true. <laughs> uh, this would represent kind of, you know, this is the house of uh, travel. So this yin energy card would maybe suggest that you're not traveling because uh, it's more of like a kind of passive energy. But again, it just intuitively, I do feel there's like a ton of travel opportunity for you, especially because not only will we have Uranus in Taurus, but we have uh, Jupiter will be entering into Taurus for a short period of time this year as well, um, you know, towards the end of the year. So, um, or, you know, the second half of the year, I should say. And, you know, to me, for you, that could definitely increase your travel. But, um, you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe you spent a lot of time traveling this year, 2022, and maybe you're um, just not traveling as much or something like that. Um, but again, there's more in this house, though. It also has to do with, like, learning. And so I feel a lot of you uh, could be processing a lot of, th just just a lot. You know, I kind of feel this is saying maybe, it, maybe there is a little bit more of a withdrawn energy in the sense that you're processing a lot of information. Maybe you're going over lessons and things like that that you have learned in your life and you're kind of just in, like, I feel like you're just integrating the information. I, I will say it is kind of interesting in your next house, the 10th house, you have this wombat spirit that says be at home. So, <laughs> you know, some of you definitely might be spending more time at home. You have the judgment card, the king of swords and the eight of swords, literally the card of knowledge and wisdom. The, again, the ninth house is the house of wisdom, which is, you know, wisdom is basically taking your knowledge, the things that you learn and putting them into action. So, you know, I do feel it would be a good time for you to put things that you have learned into action. This year, you could gain a lot of wisdom from doing that. And it looks to me like this could actually be very profitable for you as well. You have the Ten of Pentacles showing up here. Um, a lot of people have been getting the Ten of Pentacles. I think that Ten of Pentacles is probably going to show up for, you know, everyone <laughs> for, for the next few years, especially Uranus and Taurus is basically the Ten of Pentacles. It is like building and leaving a legacy. Ten of Pentacles is building and leaving a legacy, but with Uranus and Taurus, Uranus and Taurus wants us to build and leave a legacy. It wants us to build something permanent. So I feel like you could be doing that. You do have the Eight of Swords here, which could be you feeling a little bit trapped. It's like interesting that you go Eight of Swords, Star to the Five of Pentacles. Like you might want to travel. You might want to, you know, have you might have dreams of doing things like traveling, moving, uh, going to other countries, stuff like that, because this is the ninth house. But you could be feeling trapped, and it could be due to your finances with the Five of Pentacles, but you have the Ten of Pentacles right here, and you have the Six of Pentacles as well. Uh, it could be one of those things where maybe you want to travel, maybe you have the money, but maybe you're worried about the money, right? Maybe you're worried about, um, you know, maybe you have the money to do it, but maybe you're also saying like, oh, they're talking about recession on the news. I better not spend money. I better save my money. And I'm not, I'm not suggesting that you don't sa save your money uh, or anything like that. But, you know, I think what's going to happen in the future is, I, well, I don't know because I have no clue what I'm talking about. But uh, what I would say is what I think is going to happen is that People are gonna, are gonna start to realize that it's like if you want to travel somewhere, uh, you could document it, you could create videos about it, and you can make money off of it. <laughs> so it's like you could travel and make money, right? So you can make the money back if you uh, do videos in the right way, or if you you know create a travel blog or something like that. So it's like there are ways to do the things you want to do. Maybe you have to do a little work while you're doing it, but you, you get what I'm saying. You can you can kind of finesse the situation. Is what I'm trying to get at here, Virgo. I kind of feel like some of you are learning how to do that. That's why I'm talking about this is that you could be learning about how to, you know, do something that you want to do and get paid for it at the same time. Uh, you have the judgment card here. I feel like you're waking up to it. Uh, I feel like you could be waking up to new opportunities. Again, this is a card of, it's not really a card of travel, but I feel that some of you could be waking up to opportunities to travel. Again, there seems to be some sort of connection between travel and something else. It's like popping into my head and it's popping into my head on this card, I which you know, again, not accurate tarot, but intuitively, it's that's what I'm getting. It's like maybe some of you want to travel to another country. Maybe, um, I don't know, maybe get get an opportunity to like work in that country or something like that. You know, that's what I mean by connection. Um, 
maybe someone wants you to go there and do some work for them or you know whatever i don't know i would be looking for those opportunities um judgment is also a really good card for waking up to your own like knowledge like it is your personal vision for your life the judgment card or really it's like your inner calling so some of you could be learning about an inner calling or you could be kind of discovering a new inner calling that you have and again it would be a great time to learn about it clearly with the judgment card you have the inheritance card Again, in this house, I, I kind of feel like some some of you, it's almost like a divine right. You know, it's like you are here to do something on earth and you could be discovering what you are here to do with this energy. Love it. With the King of Swords, you have this inspiration card. I feel like you need to follow your inspirations. We literally see that right here. Literally saying your inspiration is going to lead to the Ten of Pentacles. <laughs> Permanent change. But you have to believe in it. There's You know, it's like there are these little tiny beliefs inside of you, Virgo, that I feel like could be kind of getting in the way of your ten of pentacles i don't think this is a bad thing we all we all have these beliefs these are you know everybody has to deal with this right but uh you know it, it just might be a good year for you to work on those beliefs it's why well, i would say it is a good year for you to work on those beliefs for you to like overcome those things uh with the eight of swords you have this extremism card so i would be careful of extreme thinking uh you know we're getting very close to 2025 at the end of 2025 well really i should say in 2026 uh, Neptune will be moving into Aries. I know that's like three years away from now, but I don't care. <laughs> um, to me, Neptune and Aries is going to, you know, maybe bring about some extreme thinking or extremism in people, right? Where you could be thinking that, um, you know, even on a personal level, right? You could be thinking that uh, a situation you enter into is either all good or all bad. And, you know, I think we need to realize that usually things are a mixture of both, right? And they're not one or the other. So as long as you have balanced thinking about the uh, any opportunity that you take advantage of, I feel like you'll be fine. But it's like if when we, you have those expectations that something is going to be one or the other, that, you know, I think that's where the problems come in, um, you know, especially now. And again, it's going to be very, very true in 2026 20, and beyond, right? But it's also true now. <laughs> so, you know, I would start thinking about it right now uh, here, Virgo. I feel like I just called you Aries. So if I did, sorry, Virgo. Uh, next, we're going to be looking at your 10th house of career. You, uh, It's the house of career, fame, long-term goals, you know, things like that. And you have the wombat spirit. It says, be at home. So some of you could be working from home. It looks good to me if you're doing that. You have the star and the 10 of cups, which is like, fortune after difficulty. So if you do work from home, there could be a lot of benefits or uh, you could be finding a lot more success in the things that you do at home, which I like. Some of you, again, it is interesting. You know, I kind of feel like you could be doing a lot of traveling, actually, even though that card in the first row says you wouldn't. And this card is also about being at home. It could also be one of those things where, you know, maybe you're traveling shorter distances because it's so weird that I feel I feel travel, but not travel. So I'm wondering if you're traveling for shorter periods of time, maybe you're traveling shorter distances, or just maybe you're not traveling as much. But I do feel there is a lot of success in the home. Uh, you have the Page of Cups, the Star, the Ten of Cups, and the Four of Swords. So I do feel that a lot of you could be kind of like healing. You know, here's the thing is that the Star and the Ten of Cups, which again, you have the Star right above the Ten of Cups over here. This is like your happily ever after. It is whatever you see as being able to kind of, um, you know, whatever you see as your ultimate happiness. And what's even crazier than that is you go 10 of cups, 10 of pentacles, six of cups. This is amazing for you, Virgo. I mean, this is very positive. I feel like there could be a lot of happiness and joy coming in for you at this time. To me, you know, happiness isn't something we get. You know, I think we should work towards happiness. I wouldn't want to be happy all the time either. <laughs> like, I think it sounds good on, on, on the surface, but, you know, it's like I, I enjoy working towards things. And to me, happiness is the result of achievement. And I like having achievements in, in my life. I feel like you do too. That's why I'm saying this. So I kind of like see here that some of you maybe you know, it's like you like anyone else, your feelings go up and down, but I feel like you're kind of more happy this year, but it's probably because there are more achievements. Uh, your next house, the 11th house, has to do with luck. And you have that 10 of pentacles there. I mean, damn. You know, it's like your financial luck is increasing or something, or maybe just your hard work is paying off. This is uh, the four of swords. 
you can see right here, there's a stained glass window on the Four of Swords, and there's a person receiving blessings in that stained glass window. So I do feel like there are like financial blessings or there's some sort of blessing coming in for you here. You have the star, which is also a card of blessings. It's a card of wishes. It's a card of hope, faith, and renewal. I kind of feel like something is giving you hope and like something is giving you just like a boost. It's almost like a boost of inspiration. You have that inspiration card right next to it. Sometimes I think we, you know, create these stories in our head where we worry about something. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I feel like some of you, I don't even have a good like way to express this to you, but I, like I feel that some of you have maybe been worrying about certain things in work or career, like what will people think of me? Um, you know, it, it probably has to do with like how you come off or how you present yourself to the world with a star. Star, you know, is like Aquarius. It is being a star. It is getting attention on yourself. So it probably has a lot to do with attention or how people see you. But something's changing here for the better. You know, I feel like maybe you're not so worried about criticism. Maybe you're worrying less about what people think. And because of that, I feel like you're just putting work out into the world, whatever you work on. And that is probably bringing in a lot of success. You do have the Page of Cups here. I do feel like a little bit of love here. Again, these aren't te technically, these aren't really love houses. Although, you know, pretty much any house in astrology could have to do with love because we can apply the energy to pretty much anything. That's how it works. But, you know, I do feel that something about love here. You could be meeting a person through your career or through business. I do feel that. Um, this is another card of dreaming though. He's got this fish in this cup and that fish might not exist. It might be part of his imagination. So if, you know, you have three dream cards here, ten of cups, star, and this card. Uh, whatever you've been dreaming of creating or doing or having, uh, there could be a lot of success here for you. So uh, let's see. Uh, with the page of cups, you have this resistance card. <laughs> Uh, you have to get rid of the resistance here, Virgo, for sure. Um, you know, it's funny. I, I just said to Pisces that, a you know, a good book for you to read would be The War of Art. And no, I am not talking about The Art of War. I am talking about The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, um, all about resistance. You know, he is mostly talking about art, in, but he really talks about how we kind of have to practice. We have to, you know, if we come up with an idea, we, we aren't going to be perfect the first like 20 times that we do something or more. So we have to practice so that we can learn how to get better. And that's the only way to overcome resistance. So that might be a good book for you to learn. And again, you're the, you're the opposite of Pisces. So you might want to look into it. With the star, you have this power card. I do feel that a lot of you um, you know, could be stepping into positions of power. I feel like you have a lot of power at this time as well, especially in worker business. So I would be using that power responsibly, but also, I mean, honestly, <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of success coming in for you, especially if you're, you know, I feel like some of you are taking the lead, but which other people have had this year, but your leadership is different because I feel like you're taking, it's more like you're taking the lead of yourself, if that makes sense. I feel like you're, maybe you're just better at telling yourself what to do or you know maybe you're just better at understanding which things work and what things don't work in your business and so you're kind of like taking the lead that way it looks good to me with the ten of cups and the four of swords you have this escape card <laughs> uh, I feel like you're trying to escape from like restless vibes restless energy with that four of swords that's not really what the Four of Swords represents, but again, I read intuitively, that's what I'm getting here, is that I feel like you're kind of looking for to use your energy in better ways. This card kind of reminds me of the Chariot as well. So I do feel there could be some like victories actually coming in for you in your career. Uh, next, we're going to look at your 11th house. You have this science card. It says, keep an open mind. There's something unfolding for you. Um, and it also says like chemistry, forensic, forensics, biotech, or anything in the field of science. Some of you could be working in science. You also have this card that says, don't let people suck the air out of your spirit. The 11th house has to do with your community. It has to do with groups that you belong to, the future, luck. I feel like there is a lot of luck here. But again, I would also be careful of things involving people. Remember what I said about the star card? I feel like you have a lot of power, but the one thing is, is like the fear of criticism or the fear of being criticized could be the thing that is kind of like sucking the wind out of your sails. So I would definitely be careful of that. You have the five of pentacles, the 10 of pentacles and the uh, six of pentacles. The five of pentacles says, do not call attention to your weaknesses. He has this bell around his neck and it represents a time back uh back in the day <laughs> where lepers used to have to wear bells around their neck so people knew when they were coming down the streets. 
And it basically just says, do not call attention to your weaknesses, focus on your strengths. None of us are perfect at everything, but you're probably really good at a few things, right? And so in like work, business, but all areas of your life, I would focus on what you're good at and let other people do the other stuff, right? And so when we focus on our strengths, that's when we become very successful. And that's kind of like what I feel like this is talking about. You have the 10 of Pentacles, uh, love it, amazing. I feel like there's a lot of success and abundance coming in for you here. Uh, I also feel that again, 10 of Pentacles is kind of a card of community. You can see that there's people <laughs> on this card. I feel like some of you are finding like, you're, it's like you're finding out who is truly loyal to you. I feel like you're finding out the people that are really gonna be good to you, the people that are gonna support you, the, the people that are there for you and like all those other things. So I feel like you're figuring out like who you can trust, who you can build with and all this other stuff. And I feel this is gonna be very good for you, especially for those of you in work and career. Again, seems to be a work and career focus here. Ten of Pentacles is a card of career. It is also a card of building or leaving a legacy. So I do feel you're very focused on, you know, kind of creating long-term abundance and success. You also have the Six of Pentacles. Again, you know, this is a card of equal give and take, but you can see he's giving to one person, but not the other person. I do feel like you are getting better at uh, kind of just, maybe you're just getting better at understanding, oh, I can, you know, I can give this type of energy to this person, but I shouldn't be giving energy to these other people. <laughs> I feel you're very focused on, like equal give and take. And I also feel like you're very focused on making sure that you're creating these equal give and take type um, relationships. So no more no more like one-sided relationships. This goes for love, but also other types of relationships as well. Uh, I feel like, part of me feels like, again, that this is the thing that is probably increasing your luck. You know, I like to remind people, if you're always just giving to people and you're not receiving, then you're actually becoming unlucky because you're giving energy away for free, then it, then it, then it has no value. And again, that's why I always say it's really important that when we give, we're giving in like equally and we're getting something back for what we're giving in all situations. Because if you're just giving to an empty situation, then again, you're kind of uh, making yourself unlucky because, you know, like I said, you're, you, eventually your energy is just going to run out. And... Maybe that's why you're becoming more lucky. But let's see, uh, with the Five of Pentacles, you have this exaltation card, focus on your strengths. You know, this is a card of being lifted up. It's a card of, um, you know, something that's divinely guided and something that could be very successful for you. So I feel like you need to focus on the things that you're good at. With the Ten of Pentacles, you have the authority card. Yes, it would not surprise me. Um, apparently we're out of batteries, hold on. Sorry about that, Virgo. I've been doing doing videos for hours and I forgot to change my batteries. But, uh, you know, again, as I was saying, it wouldn't surprise me if you were becoming an authority. The Ten of Pentacles, which this card is clarifying, is a card of authority and becoming an authority figure. And, you know, it can represent, it can kind of represent that like authority energy. It's a card of hidden or secret information. There, it, this is like a little known meaning of the Ten of Pentacles. There's this older man on the card and he can represent a beggar he can represent someone who maybe has nothing to give, but he's coming and giving a gift to this family who has just had a child on the card. And, you know, but again, that person could be you. You could be the one that has hidden or secret information. It's not like you have information that you're not going to share. I think this is exactly what makes you an authority is that you are sharing information that people don't really know or maybe people need. Or, you know, again, I think the other important thing here is, is that you might be able to present information in a way that makes it easier for people to understand or um, maybe just the way you express yourself is like, you know, better. I don't know. It's like, I think of like teachers, think of teachers. It's like, I had some teachers that sucked and some that were really great, right? And probably the good ones were just better at getting their point across, right? It's just that simple. So you could be a person like that. And that's probably why you're being seen as authority. This could be in work and business or whatever. Uh, communication is gonna be really important this year. So, you know, if you're just able to communicate your point better, obviously you're going to be more successful and you're gonna be being seen as an authority. With the Six of Pentacles, you have this harmony card. I would do whatever whatever that word means to you. Six of Pentacles is about investing your time, effort, and energy into the things that make you feel more harmony in your life. So it's like, what things in your life bring you peace? It could be anything. Is it like, maybe it's like going fishing. Maybe it's uh, going for walks in the woods. Maybe it's uh, driving around. I don't know, whatever it is, right? I would do more of those things. I feel like this is saying that it's going to make you more lucky. Again, this is a house of your luck. And I don't think that's not the only thing the 11th house represents, but that definitely 
uh, seems to be the focus for you in this um, area of your reading. It's also the house of groups as well. And again, you could be becoming like an authority that is leading a group or or if you're not, maybe you should be. <laughs> it's kind of what this is saying to me. So maybe you are, maybe you have an interest, right? It might be a good idea for you this year to start a group. Could make you a bunch of money. Could make you, just make you an authority. Could make you very successful. I would do it. Uh, finally, for your 12th house, you have this poverty card in this bad health card. I actually feel like some of you are bringing this to an ending. This does make me a little bit worried because the 12th house can have to do with like illness or bad health. Um, I'm not a doctor, so do not take this as medical advice, but I would definitely watch your health, although I kind of feel like you are pretty healthy uh, this year. I do feel like some of you are kind of coming out of a period of poverty. For some of you, it might not be financial though. It might be spiritually, you know, it's like, I, that's what I'm getting here is intuitively is that some of you, maybe you have been feeling spiritually unfulfilled or, you know, it could be some other area of your life, right? Take it how it resonates, wherever you feel this. And um, if you look at this reading, you have the Six of Cups, the Two of Swords and the Queen of Swords. Again, I don't know if I said this, the 12th house has to do with endings, closures, uh, you know, receiving closure from a person things that are hidden secrets, uh, releasing things as well. And you have the Six of Cups. So the Six of Cups, number one, I do feel some of you could be releasing someone from the past. I feel it could be a person that you're releasing here with these Six of Cups. But I also feel that this is telling us that there's going to be a turnaround for you either in your health, in your, in your wealth, or both. Uh, because Six of Cups can be a gift from the universe. And the gift we usually receive from the Six of Cups is a turnaround. <laughs> usually, we've been experiencing an obstacle, which we actually see right here on the Two of Swords. There is this island behind her on the Two of Swords. She's not looking at the island. She's trying to protect her heart. But that island represents an obstacle that she needs to overcome. It's a new island. She's never been there before. She's sitting where she has always been. And it's actually not a bad obstacle either. It's like sometimes there are obstacles in life that are good obstacles, right? There are maybe um, like, uh, I don't know, going to college, right? Could be for some people, that's a good obstacle because you have to go through the years of college to maybe get a career or something like that. Could be something else like building a business. It's like usually the first years aren't that great until later on, right? So, you know, she needs to go to that new island. And I feel like for some of you, Again, there's like a turnaround coming in for you because I feel like you are clear on what the obstacle is. She is clear for the first time on the Queen of Swords. The clouds are only halfway up her body. She finally sees things clearly. It's almost like, you know, the 12th house can represent something that is hidden coming in. What I, it doesn't really represent this, but intuitively what I feel is that something is coming to light. It's like something that has been hidden is being revealed to you. Again, I am not a doctor, so do not take this as medical advice. But for some of you, if you've been having a health issue, I do feel you could be with like the help of a doctor. Queen of Swords is like an expert and you also have the King of Swords as well. Uh, you know, this could be like a person who can help you solve your problem. And so definitely seek out an authority figure. <laughs> you have the authority card with the 10 of Pentacles. For those of you that have any problems at all, period, in your life, uh, finding a authority or someone who knows what they're talking about could be, could really solve your problem very quickly. With the Six of Cups, you have this devotion card. And I kind of feel like this is what you're looking for in love, if you want love. Again, this is the house of endings, you know, the 12th house. So I do feel like some of you have had an ending in love and I feel like you're hoping for a new beginning, but it's like, you want true devotion. You know, I feel like you want a true connection, like these two birds <laughs> with the one dead bird uh, on it. How cute is that? So I think that's what you're looking for. With the Two of Swords, you have the patience card. I feel like you have been very patient for these things to come in. I also feel like you've been patient for like changes. And uh, finally, with the Queen of Swords, you have this discrimination card. You always get this card. This card is like discernment. It's not like discrimination, like racism. It's about kind of like seeing what works and what won't work in your life, being able to tell the difference. So um, I feel like this is something that you've learned. I feel like you have learned discernment. Like it's like you've learned to not just jump at any situation that comes your way. I feel like you've learned to kind of like pick and choose the things that you allow into your life. We're gonna pull five main themes now. You have this pin card, it says new job, career on it. Uh, so clearly there could be a new job or career. Uh, if you already have a job or career or business that you're happy with, I, I think that you're, you're just like becoming an authority. You could just be leveling up. I don't really feel you have to have something new. 
Now you have this fan card. It says romance, celebration, party. So there definitely could be new romance or just romance in general coming in for you. Uh, you have the sun card. It says happiness and well-being. Love it. Definitely. Uh, this is what I'd be focusing on is happiness. And like I said, with that harmony card, I'd be focusing on creating more happiness or just doing more of the activities that bring you happiness. You have this elephant. It says a long journey, either physical or mental, will leave you wiser at the end. I told you I was feeling travel even though I was feeling no travel. I don't even know like what this means. Again, sometimes messages I get don't make sense for whatever reason. But, you know, and again, I don't claim to know everything, but I keep getting this like travel, no travel thing like we were talking about at the beginning of the reading. But I definitely feel there will be travel. <laughs> Having said no travel. Uh, you have this candle card. It, was, it says you will be shown the way. Yeah, clarity uh, with that queen of swords. I do feel... That some of you really could be overcoming like a big obstacle or something that has been plaguing you for a long time. That's a, Those are the words that are popping into my head. So uh, there you go, Virgo. Looks really nice. I like it. So thank you for being here, Virgo. Really appreciate it. Make sure to watch your Sun, Moon, Rising for a full picture of what's going on for you at this time. But thank you and definitely enjoy your year.